Now we're going to go from binomial distributions to a normal distribution. And to have an example problem up here, an example question, then this one's about diastolic blood pressures that are assumed to follow a normal distribution with a mean of 85 and a standard deviation of 12. So what I've done is I've created uh, two cells, one that contains the mean and one that contains the standard deviation. We're going to refer to those in the formulas that we use in a moment. Before I get to that, I wanted to call out the visual that I put on the screen here. And trying to describe the way that the calculations work, for me, it's been helpful to actually show a normal distribution. And then what I'm going to do is draw on that visual what exactly is going on when we're doing these calculations. So let's talk about the first question here. I happen to have the answer up there already, but I'm going to go through this a little bit step by step. So in, in calculating the normal distribution, of course, there is a function in Excel, in Excel called uh, normdist, and uh, it's going to ask you for four inputs. Uh, the first one is going to be uh, the point that we are interested in calculating, and in this case, the question is what proportion of people have a diastolic blood pressure that is less than 90. So x in this case is going to be 90. The mean we've already put into a separate cell. It's 85, so we'll reference it there. And then for standard deviation, we also have that in another cell, and it was told as 12. And then for uh, cumulative, now since we are going to count uh, all of the values uh, prior to 90 and up into 90, uh, we can set this to true. Uh, we believe in the previous examples we were we were leaving this false because we just wanted the exact point when we were doing binomial distributions. So for here, uh, the the proportion of people who have a blood pressure less than 90 is roughly 66.15%. Now let's go and visualize this. This is where I, I find this sort of help, helpful here. And I have my handy pad out. So we're going to go ahead and draw on uh, this visual. And what I've done is I've already calculated uh, the way that it's supposed to look based on giving it uh, mu, which is the mean 85 and sigma, the standard deviation 12, right? And for this value, uh, less than 90, what we're really looking for is let's sort of imagine that 90 is right here. And if I draw a line through the distribution to there, then everything less than this line that's on this side going this way is, are all the, is the proportion of people that have a blood pressure uh, less than 90. And we've said that this is roughly 66% of the folks. Okay, so I hope that sort of visualizes for you uh, what we're looking for um, in this particular problem and, and what we're trying to achieve. Okay, so that's that, that's that question. Let's go on to the next one. A little bit more complicated. So it, it's asking what is the proportion uh, of folks that have blood pressures between 80 and 90? Well, good news, we've already calculated 90. We happen to know that it's a 0 0.6615. If we didn't say it was um, 100, then I could just go and, and do the same calculation I did before and type in 100. In fact, that's what we're going to do with 90. We're going to follow the same problem. In fact, I can cut it out of here. And, uh, and copy it in, uh, copy it out, and then we'll go to this, this cell and we'll paste it back in because that's all I really need. I just have to change my x. What's the point we're looking for in here? And that's um, 80. So we want everything less than 80. And um, now all I have to do is take the 90, which is the higher higher proportion, and subtract, get the difference uh, subtract the 80 point out of it to get the difference between the two. Uh, so roughly 32.3%. Now let me show you why we're doing the subtraction because it might not make a lot of sense why we're doing that. So let's go back to our distribution again. So 80 is uh, this point right here. Remember 85 is the mean. So 80 is right here. So we'll go ahead and we'll draw a line down to 80. And then 90, I'm sort of going to indicate as being right here. Okay. So when we calculated the proportion less than 80, we got everybody in this shaded area uh, here. 
when we calculated everybody less than 90, then I'm going to change colors. We got everybody in this shaded area here, plus all of the people over here. <laughs> so why are we subtracting it out? Because we need to know the difference between uh, the, the shaded areas that overlap and just the shaded area that has the group less than 90. And that happens to be the 32.3%. Uh, so this area right in from here to here from this part of this bar is roughly 32%. Okay, so that's why we're, we're doing it that way. All right, let's go back and get rid of this again. We're gonna do one more. Uh, and the last question is, if someone has a, a diastolic blood pressure less than, or I'm sorry, a diastolic blood pressure of 100, exactly 100, what percentile does this represent? Okay, so we're going to go back. We're going to say equals norm dist 100 is what we're trying to find. Uh, the mean is 85. We'll indicate that their standard deviation is 12. And we'll also do this as cumulative, yes. All right, that will tell us exactly what percentile it is, and it's 89th percentile, right? How can we prove that visually? Well, let's go look. Where is 100 on here? Let's go back. Well, 100 happens to already be on there. It's right here. Okay. Uh, and so we're going to say that this particular point uh, is 89.4%. Uh, which visually sort of makes sense. The halfway point is 50%, and we we know that 90 is 66.15. Uh, so another another 10 blood pressure points here. This sort of makes makes sense that this would be the 89th percentile. Okay, so that's very quickly how to use the norm dist formula inside Excel and break down the questions, plug in the mean, the standard deviation, and then visually I hope it also made sense to see graphically what we're trying to do and, uh, and what proportions we're trying to extract. Up next we're going to start talking about confidence intervals.